Hello class, today we are going to talk about slopes of lines and also about partitioning directed line segments. All right. Now the first of this is going to be pretty simple stuff. You should have had this ages ago and it's just going to be reviewed. Second part, a little bit more complicated. All right. So first, finding the slopes of a lines. Everybody should remember this from whenever it was y'all did that, sixth grade, maybe earlier, I don't remember. Slope is rise over run. It is the change in y over the change in x. Or another way you could have this is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. All right. And remember, very important, you always go from the left to the right. Same direction you read, unless you're reading right back. But always go from the left to the right. Okay. Now, a couple of things. Negative slope, it's going to fall from left to right, as we have in line J. Positive slope rises from left to right, as in line K, as it says, always going left to right. Now, a zero slope, this is not the same as no slope, this is zero slope, or a slope of zero, is a horizontal line, right? Because rise over run, so it's zero, because we're not going up any, we're not going down any, so it's zero over whatever it is, over 2, over 5. 0 divided by anything is 0. Vertical lines on the other, like line N, what we have there, this is an undefined slope because rise over run, our rise, okay, maybe we're going up 5, but then it's divided by 0. And as we know, we cannot divide by 0. Even here, I'll put it on my thing here, 5 divided by 0 is, yeah, error, divided by 0. Can't happen. Not going to do it. Unless you're Chuck Norris, and you're not. So, that is slope. Now, there are two things that we can do with slope, a couple of special cases. Parallel lines and perpendicular lines. All right? Parallel lines, if they are non-vertical, the parallel lines will have the same slope. All right? Doesn't matter what they are. The slope of one is equal to the slope of the other. Now, this isn't true for vertical lines because vertical lines have undefined slope. There's, we can't write anything down. But any two vertical lines will always be parallel because they both have undefined slopes. So, parallel. All right. Slopes of perpendicular lines. If your lines are perpendicular, then any two, again, non-vertical lines, are perpendicular if and only if the product of the slopes is negative 1. All right. Or the way you probably learned it, if the slopes are opposite reciprocals. For example, the slope of line 1 might be 3 over 4, and the other one would be negative 4 over 3. And you'll notice, if you multiply those out, then you end up with 1. Because you have 3 over 4 times negative 4 over 3, which gives you negative 12 over, I uh, can't write, over 12, which is negative 1. All right. So the slopes will multiply to 1, or they'll just be opposite reciprocals either way. Okay. Now, horizontal lines are always perpendicular to vertical lines. We have a problem there because you have 0 times what equals negative 1. Doesn't happen, right? Because the slope of a horizontal line is 0 times something equals negative 1. No, one times nothing equals negative 1. 0 times anything is 0. However, you also have the problem with undefined. Okay. But the slope is 0, so 0 over 1. You flip that over for opposite reciprocal, and you have negative 1 over 0, which you can't divide by 0, so again, undefined. All right. So that is all review. You should already know that. And so let's do something with it real quick. All right. Let's take a look at this. Real quickly, I would like for you to pause the video and find the slopes of lines A, B, C, and D. All right, you're back. Let's see how you did. Line A. All right, line A, we have change in Y over change in X, right? So let's see, point on, let's see, we've got that point there. It's 6, 4, and 8, 2. So let's just do this. That would be 6 minus 8 over, no, 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 that's wrong. Change in Y over change in X. 
six, four, eight, two, change in y's. So we take the y's first, so that'll be four minus two. Four minus two over the change in our x's, six minus eight. Doesn't matter which one is point one, which one's point two, as long as you're consistent. Okay, so don't do four minus two and then eight minus six, because then you get back mixing it all up. All right, so four minus two is two. 6 minus 8 is negative 2, and so that would be simplifies down to negative 1. So the slope of line A equals negative 1. All right, let's take a look at line B. Let's see, line B is right here. So I have my first point there is at 6, 4. My other one is at 4, 0 change in y's, so that would be 4 minus 0, over my change in x's, 6 minus 4, 6 minus 4, 4 minus 0 is 4, 6 minus 4 is 2, and that is going to simplify to 2, so my slope of line B is equal to 2. Pretty easy stuff. Okay, now let's take a look at line C, where is line C? There it is, C, and Okay, I could plug this in, right? But I can see this is following my grid lines. This is horizontal. I don't have to do anything. The horizontal slope, as we saw on the first page, slope is zero. It's a horizontal line. I'm going to go ahead and do it just so you can see this real quickly. So change in y's, I have 4 minus 4 over my change in x's, 6 minus 0. So I have 0 divided by 6, which is 0 because it's horizontal. So just so you can see how that works, y is 0. So the slope of line C is 0. Last one, line D. Let me see. There it is. And that's a vertical line. So yeah, I could work this out. I'd have 4 minus 0, which is 4, 6 minus 6, which is 0. So I'd have 4 divided by 0, which you can't do. This is vertical. I'm just going to say that this is vertical. And so the slope of line D is undefined. Undefined. There it is. Easy stuff. All right, let's take a look down here. I want to know which of these lines are parallel, which of these lines are perpendicular. Now, looking at them, they... A, B, and C looked like they could all be parallel. Maybe, maybe off by a little bit. Not really sure. They all look pretty close. So we're going to have to find the slope of A, B, and C to see if they're parallel. And then we're going to find the slope of line D to see which one of these might be perpendicular. So really quickly, if you would, pause the video and find the slopes of all four of these lines. All right, let's see how you did. Real quick. Then we can go on and find do more. So the slope of A, we have, let's see, 0, 3, and negative 3, 2. So change in Y's would be 3 minus 2 over my change in X's, 0 minus negative 3. So that would be 1 over 0 minus negative 3. 1 over 3. All right, let's take a look at B. B, we have... 2, 0, and 0, negative 1. So change in y's. So I've got 0 minus negative 1. And change in x's, 2 minus 0. 2 minus 0. So 0 minus negative 1 is going to be 1. 2 minus 0 is 2. All right. Line C. Where is C? C where is. So I've got 1, negative 4, and negative 1, negative 5. So, and let's just do this. Slope is up 1 over 2. 1 over 2. Right, up 1 over 2. Left to right. And how about line D? Okay, so left to right, I have a point here and a point there. So that would be rise over run. So it's going down 2. So that's negative 2 over one. Okay, so there are all of my slopes. And I can work them out like this. If I've got my graph, I can just rise and run. Yeah, okay. 
So let's see, which ones are parallel? Let's see, just to remind ourselves. Parallel lines will have the same slope. So which ones have the same slope? That would be B and C. So B is parallel to line C because they have the same slope. Let's see, we need to know which ones are, did anyone else? Let's see, one third, one, nope, okay, we're good. So let's see, perpendicular slopes, technically they're going to multiply to equal negative one, or we can just look for opposite reciprocals. So let's see here, we have one over three opposite reciprocal of that, unless it would be three, negative three over one, but the only one we have that could be perpendicular is D, right? So what is D? D is negative two over one. Opposite reciprocal of negative 2 over 1 is positive 1 over 2, which means it is perpendicular to both of those. So D is perpendicular to C, and D is perpendicular to B. And there's our answers. All right. Not too bad. Now for the new stuff, which is a little bit more complicated. What we're doing here, we are partitioning a directed line segment. All right. A directed line segment AB specifies that it moves from point A to point B. So we're going in that direction, from A to B. And what we're going to do is we want to find a point on that directed line segment that partitions the segment in a given ratio. Okay, so that means it's going to cut it in a given ratio. So what we're going to do on this one, we want to find the coordinates of point P along the directed line segment so that the ratio of AP to PB is 3 to 2. Okay. So, in other words, what we're doing. So, from A to B, we have the Y values, we have the X values, and we want to split both of these up so that it is 3 to 2. All right. Somewhere up here, so this is three parts to two parts, okay? That is kind of what we're looking at. That's what we're trying to do. And so if we have three to two, that means how many total parts do we have? Well, we have three here, we have two there, so we have five parts. We're going to take this ratio, which is three plus two equals five, all right? So three to two, so we really want three to five, kind of. All right, now, we're going to use slope. So our slope from A to B, well, our rise is 6, the run is 3. And we can just count it on this, fits on the grid, and let's just write that. All right, 6 to 3. And the way this works, all right, we need to find how far over we need to move. We want to take this 3 and split it up into 5 pieces, and we want 3 of them. Basically, that's how it works. So what we have, we're going to take this 3 right there times 3 over 5 from right here. Uh, so that equals 1.8, which means from our original starting point right here, we want to move our x's over 1.8 units. But that's from the original starting point. So from our starting point of 3, 2. So I need to add that to where you started. 3.8 more than where we were originally. And so 1.8 plus 3. I'm not saying 3.8. 1.8. 1.8 plus 3 equals 4.8. All right. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with the Y values. So my Y values, I have 6. I want to split that up into five parts, of which I want three of them, because it's three, to five, three out of five. So six times the same three over five that we had before. All right, and that equals 3.6. So that means I'm going to go up 3.6 units. Up from where? Up from where I started. So up from 2, and 3.6 plus 2 equals 5.6. So that means point P is going to be right there somewhere, kind of, sort of. That's point P, and the coordinates are 4.8, 5.6.
Okay. Now, what I want you to do is do the same kind of thing down here. We're going to do one other example. All right, so pause the video, work this out, then come back and see how you did. All right. So our coordinates are negative 1, negative 2, and 9, 4. All right. And nine, that's not going to fit on my paper, so we'll do something different. All right. So what we're going to do, we'll start the same way. We want to take the ratio here, our partition ratios, and add them up. So we have 3 plus 5, which is 8. So that means I want 8 pieces divided into 8 pieces, of which I want 3 of them. Okay? So, but what is it we're splitting up? I don't have the graph because it doesn't fit. Well, this is just slope, right? Change in y over change in x's. So let's see, what is my change? I'm going to do x's first. So I just want change in x's. Well, what is that? That is 9 minus negative 1. 9 minus negative 1. And 9 minus negative 1 is 10. All right? Now let's do the same thing for my y's. Change in y, I have 4 minus negative 2, which equals 6. All right? And now I have all the numbers I needed right there. So we start with x's, so we have 10 times 3 over 8, which equals 3.75. So that means I'm going to move over 3.75 units from, from what? From my starting point, which is point A, because I'm going along the directed line segment AB. So from right there. So I'm going to add negative 1, which equals right color, 2.75. And now we're going to do the exact same thing with the y's. So my y's, I have 6 units to split up. So 6 times 3 eighths, which equals 2.25. So I'm going to go up two and a quarter units from where? Well, from where I started, right there, at negative two. So plus negative two. And two and a quarter plus negative two is going to be 0 0.25. So that means point P is going to be at 2.75, 0 0.25. Right. And there's our answer. And we can do it without the graph, because it's not going to fit on my graph. So it'll be ugly. And it's ugly anyways, because it doesn't fit exactly on the thing. It's decimals, right? Huh. So there it is. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. I know the partitioning of direct line segment is a little bit weird, but it's not too bad. What you have to do is first figure out, okay, how many pieces do you have? Add up the two numbers. Of those pieces, how many do you want? And that gives you your ratio that you're going to use here. All right. Then you're going to multiply it by how far did your x's go? Changing your x's, split up into that many pieces, means you're moving over that far from your starting point, and that gives you your x's. Then you do the same thing with your y's. All right. So not too terrible. And then there is just the basic stuff with slope. All right. Changing x over ch uh, changing y over changing x because rise over run. If you're just looking on the graph and you count your eyes over run, you have to go from left to right. Otherwise, it all gets backwards and all gets messed up. All right. Negative is going up. Positive is, no, sorry, negative is going down. Negative is going down from left to right. Positive goes up from left to right. A zero slope is horizontal. Horizontal is a zero slope. Vertical is an undefined slope. Okay. Parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes, which multiply to negative 1. All right. Hopefully you find that useful, and I will see you in the next video.